Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, our next uh, keynote speech right now. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite to the screen uh, the administrator of the UNDP, Mr. Ahim Steiner. Policy dialogue on how to establish an enabling environment for SDG anchored investments in Turkey. It takes place at a time of unprecedented global upheaval. Countries and communities are facing the devastating socioeconomic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Human development is on course to decline for the first time in 30 years. Indeed, research by the United Nations Development Program has found that the pandemic could push the number of people living in extreme poverty to over 1 billion by the year 2030, unless focused action is taken now. And decades of hard-won progress on the sustainable development goals is starting to reverse. Yet even before the pandemic, gains have been slower or even reversed on many of the SDGs. For instance, we were simply not on track to end poverty by the year 2030. The lack of adequate funding and financing for the SDGs continues to be a major stumbling block. Even before the pandemic hit, the financing gap to meet the SDGs was estimated at some $2.5 trillion per year. In the wake of this pandemic, we need to drive forward new and innovative ways to generate the level of financing needed to achieve the SDGs. Unlocking capital will not only help countries to recover from the crisis, but will allow them to build forward better. The United Nations system is working to advance concrete measures that will significantly increase financial flows towards the SDGs. SDG Impact, a flagship initiative of UNDP, is engaging directly with business investors and policymakers to lay out the business case for the alignment of their activities with the SDGs, ultimately to drive more inclusive and resilient economic growth. One of the major obstacles identified by SDG Impact is the limited availability of impact intelligence around SDG investment opportunities. To address this information gap, SDG Impact developed the investor map methodology. These maps are a powerful tool. They provide detailed information on how specific investments and business models can advance the SDGs. The maps will identify dozens of investment opportunity areas in each country. As a result of the maps and complementary efforts, it is expected that each country involved will be able to mobilize approximately $50 million towards the SDGs. And today I'm delighted to launch the SDG investor map for Turkey. The map was developed with UNDP Turkey with the support of the UNDP Istanbul International Center for Private Sector in Development in partnership with the Investment Office of Turkey. It features 27 investment opportunity areas across nine sectors. That includes everything from technology and communications to renewable energy and healthcare. This critical market intelligence will be rolled out on a searchable online platform in the coming months. In sum, we believe that the maps will serve as a vital instrument to help the private sector in Turkey to channel finance towards national priorities and development needs, and ultimately, towards the achievement of the SDGs. In a wider sense, we hope that the investor maps will play a key role in helping to unlock the vast potential out there. For instance, if you were able to channel just 1% of global pension fund savings towards the SDGs, that would be double the amount of current official development assistance. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, the United Nations Development Program is a proud partner of Turkey in its pursuit of the 2030 Agenda. For over 50 years, we have been working together with local stakeholders to address acute development challenges. However, we cannot stand still. Rather, we must forge even stronger alliances with critical partners like the private sector and implement innovative approaches to building forward better and investing in that building forward better. In this respect, I look forward to the conclusions of today's policy dialogue on SDG financing. It is also likely to generate new avenues for cooperation. As we look beyond this pandemic, it is a moment for the entire world, nations united, if you want, to work together to advance progress on the SDGs. This will help to ensure that everyone is afforded the opportunities they need at this pivotal moment in history. Thank you.
Ahim Steiner, thank you very much. Uh, let's continue our uh, sustainable development goals talk right now. Uh, I'd like to invite to, to the stage uh, Safa Zobani, is the director of the UNDP's Istanbul International Center for Private Sector Development. The floor is yours, sir. I think it's open. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure being here today. We had the opportunity to hear from President Erdogan on the importance of social and impact investing early on as part of this launch. And also uh, the administrator of the United Nations Development Program, Mr. Uh, Akim Steiner. Um, so you're all, uh, I would like to welcome you all to this policy dialogue event to launch the SDG Investor Map Turkey. My name is Saba Sabani, and I'm the director of the UNDP Istanbul International Center for Private Sector in Development. Our center leads UNDP's global private sector portfolio based on four thematic pillars, including impact investing. Today, we have the pleasure to open this event to launch the SDG Investor Map for Turkey. Based on the flagship methodology developed by UNDP SDG Impact, the map was prepared by UNDP Turkey and the International in Istanbul Center for Private Sector and Development in collaboration with the Investment Office of Turkey, Presidency Office of Turkey. We are delighted to have cooperated with the Investment Office of Turkey on this exciting project. The SDG Investor Map Turkey has been developed as a guidance document to highlight the sectors and the business models with the highest potential to contribute to Turkey's development progress while generating financial return. The SDG Investor Map Turkey includes 27 investment opportunities identified across nine priority sectors, technology and communications, transportation, renewable and goods, infrastructure and financials. You can see the list of sectors and investment opportunities area on the screen above to give you an, an idea of the scope. The maps provide essential market intelligence on SDG enabling investment opportunities for investors. They enable investors to shape impactful business deals and perform due diligence by providing supporting information on the economic pace, the impact case, potential risk, and political, regulatory, and financial environment, environment surrounding the chosen investment opportunity areas. To promote investment flows into the business models identified by the SDG Investor Map, we held an investment convening event one week ago. Our event brought together international and local investors with companies to foster dialogue around the investment opportunity areas identified by the map. For the investment convening event, we had chosen three priority sectors with high potential and investment momentum, infrastructure, renewable energy, and healthcare. We're happy to announce that the event helped form new partnerships around some of the most innovative model of the SDG investor map, such as sustainable solid management and recycling, smart city service and technology provision, solar energy installation services and component production, telehealth and remote diagnostic services, and biotechnology production. We hope that the connection formed during the event materialized into concrete investment opportunities in the near future. Our policy dialogue event today will explore how to establish an enabling ecosystem to accelerate SDG financing and mobilize the type of investment identified by the SDG investor map. Following the opening remarks of the resident representative of UNDP Turkey, Mr. Claudio Tomasi, we will proceed with a panel discussion. I would like to now welcome Mr. Claudio Tomasi, the resident representative of the United Nations Development Program Turkey to deliver his welcoming re remarks. Over to you, Claudio. Thank you very much, uh, Saba. I hope you can all hear me loud and clear. President of the Republic of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Administrator of UNDP, Akim Steiner, distinguished panelists, dear colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. 
It gives me great pleasure to share the floor with such a distinguished panel in the framework of the 2021 Bosphorus Summit and on such an important day, the 8th of March, the International Women's Day. This year's focus on the 8th of March is on women's leadership and what a perfect match for what we are discussing in this policy dialogue event. Let me start by saying it loud and clear, without women leadership and equal opportunities, we will not come even close to the fulfillment of the sustainable development goals. Now, this investor map policy dialogue is one of the facilitation events around the Turkey SDG investor map. It is intended to foster dialogue across the board around impactful businesses models and investment opportunities areas that are aligned with national development needs and the sustainable development goals. Let me highlight here that the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP, that I have the honor to represent in this country, has been in active collaboration with the government of Turkey for over 50 years to assist the country in reaching its full developmental potential. As the UNDP, we are committed to support the achievement of the goals set out in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with our valuable partners. Turkey currently ranks 54th out of 189 countries in terms of its performance on the UNDP's Human Development Index. In this context, Turkey's position in the very high human development category has been exhibiting a consistent improvement on its human development score since the 90s. Most SDG targets are already incorporated in Turkey national development plans and sector strategies. However, as suggested by the 2020 Human Development Report, and as recent events show us, it would be futile to, get this, to take this score independently from a country's ecological footprint. On that front, Turkey is looking to make improvements as well. The country has been a party of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change since 2004, and it intends to reduce its total greenhouse emissions by 21% by 2030. Although significant progress has been made to reach the SDGs in the countries, there are still major improvements to be made. This is compounded by the effects of the COVID-19, which has deprived millions of people of their sources of livelihood. 55% of the world, 4 billion people, are currently facing the pandemic without any form of social protection. Globally, it is estimated that the pandemic could push 44 million people into extreme poverty by 2030 in a baseline scenario, and as much as 1 billion people under a high damage scenario where its effects continue unabridged, as our administrators just stated. This does not call for pessimism, but it does call for urgent and radical action. Dedicated SDG interventions can help countries accelerate out of the crisis. While a lot of responsibility falls on the shoulders of governments and citizens, the private sector also has a vital role to play. This especially so, given that one of the main reasons why the world might not reach the SDGs by 2030 is the lack of adequate financing. It is estimated that additional 2.5 trillion US dollars in SDG investments are needed if we are seriously considering achieving Agenda 2030 and the SDG targets. It is within this context that UNDP is promoting development of the SDG investor maps across the globe. We started in Brazil and have rolled out also in China, India, South Korea, and South Africa. The maps are intended to mobilize the private sector to both adopt more inclusive and sustainable business models in the real economy and direct investments towards such models when making investment decisions. The maps are based on the flagship methodology developed by our SDG impact team. We hope that this study provides necessary guidance for the investors in the implementation countries about the type of investments that could accelerate the national progress towards the SDGs. Additionally, we hope that they fuel the type of conversation that we will be having today. I would also like to mention that a comprehensive analysis was conducted by the Business for Gold platform, the first thing to do tank in private sector in Turkey 
which is also supported by UNDP, to explore the correlation between sectors and SDGs achievement in Turkey based on statistics to create a matrix, finally priority sectors in light of pressing SDG needs. The SDG and sectors correlation analysis report is to be launched in the course of the Bosphorus Summit tomorrow afternoon. So I kindly invite you to participate to that session as well. We're also proud partner of the SDG Impact Accelerator, which is a partnership with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Turkey as a global multi-stakeholder platform and accelerator that works towards empowering system entrepreneurs and innovators who can provide impact. The accelerator supports the generation of market creating innovations for refugees and least developed countries through a broad range of services spanning mentoring, funding and networking. Along with other services provided for the enterprises, the SDG Impact Accelerator aims to build an impact fund to be allocated to those who graduate from the accelerator program. As an outcome of the discussion and consultation for the SDG Impact Accelerator and the Impact Fund, a landscape study on impact investing ecosystem in Turkey was developed in cooperation with the Investment Office of the Presidency of the Republic of Turkey and the UNDP Istanbul International Center for Private Sector in Development. Built on a comprehensive best research and in-depth interviews with major stakeholders, the impact investing ecosystem in Turkey showcases opportunities in a market for international and local investors identifies high potential areas and provides policy recommendations to foster the impact investing ecosystem. Following the launch of the report, a task force was enabled towards the establishment of an impact investment nationally, national advisory board, NAB, in Turkey, which also demonstrates the interest from both public and private sectors to advance impact investments in the country. The NAB, whose details will be presented today, will also play a very important and instrumental role in creating an enabling ecosystem for impact investing in Turkey. Before concluding, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to the Presidency Investment Office, the Strategy and Budget Office, the Minister of Industry and Technology, and all our public and private sector partners who contributed to the SDG investor mapping of Turkey and the IICPSD and SABA here for their extensive support and technical work on the ground. It is imperative that we formulate an integrated response with the public and private sectors alike to pave our way out of this crisis that we're experiencing today. Addressing the financing gap by identifying investment opportunity areas for SDG friendly private sector business is just one piece of the complex puzzle that will mean success or failure for Agenda 2030. But it is nevertheless a central piece of this puzzle. Thank you all very much for your participation. Thank you very much, uh, Claudio, Mr. Thomasy. It is an honor to initiate the panel discussion for the SDG Investor Map. Please, please join me in welcoming our distinguished uh, panelists, Mr. Burak Daglioglu, the President of the Investment Office of Turkey, Mr. Ibrahim Ostop, the CEO of the Development and Investment Bank of Turkey, and Ms. Shafak Muderisigli, the Chairman of Eti Kiyab, who's joining us from London. Welcome. Mr. Burak uh, uh, Dagliogu, where do you see the uh, Turkey's potential in SDG aligned investments? How do you think the SDG investor map will contribute to the Turkish investment landscape? Uh, thank you for, the, uh, for, for giving the word to me. First of all, I would like to start uh, with you know, uh, a message that uh, today we are here uh, together, you know, uh, on the 8th of March, which is a globally, uh, you know, World Women's Day. So I would like to congratulate the uh, Day of the Women. Uh, and I think the topic is the uh, SDG and one of the uh, crucial uh, agenda under uh, SDG is uh, inclusion of uh, ladies into uh, many areas of the life. And I think th th this is a nice coincidence. Secondly, I would like to uh, thank organizers for, you know, uh, bringing us together during these challenging times, uh, and of course, we are aware that uh, we are obeying the rules of the social distancing and etc. But it, it is really uh, good to have a, a offline event, uh, maybe a hybrid event during the pandemic. 
uh, and of course I would like to thank sponsors for you know enabling this event. Uh, you mentioned about you know our role. Uh, our uh, specific mandate is to attract more foreign direct investments to Turkey and uh, uh, provide a, you know, a facilitation service for the expansion of the existing international investments. So when we look at the, uh, Turkey's economic conditions, we believe that foreign direct investments play a crucial role. I would like to give just an example, uh, a, a numerical example, and I don't want to go to details of the merits of the FTI. When we look at the period of 2003 to up until now, I mean 2020, uh, FDI inflows to Turkey financed 40% of the current account deficit of the country. And His Excellency President Erdogan in his uh, keynote speech gave uh, many examples of that and uh, the economic performance of the Turkey. And uh, he also underlined that uh, FDI inflows to Turkey uh, still continues. So uh, let me briefly uh, touch on the existing uh, investment landscape and uh, then let's discuss the impact of the uh, SDG uh, investor mapping uh, on this landscape. First of all, uh, as you all know, Turkey uh, has a very strong and uh, domestic uh, has a very strong and dynamic domestic market, and uh, it is a country which can grow even in the most challenging times of the you know uh, global economic condition. Uh, first of all, we are the largest and youngest population in our region. Uh, Turkey's population is uh, more than 83 uh, uh, million, and uh, half of the population is under uh, 33. And uh, when we look at the, again the same period uh, between 2003 to 2020, the compound annual growth rate is more than 5%. In my opinion, this is a very uh, you know uh, strong uh, indicator of the uh, economic resilience in the country. And again, the President Erdogan underlined even in a challenging year like 2020, Turkey managed to grow by 1.8%, whereas many international you know uh, many uh, other countries uh, were having a contraction. Secondly, uh, Turkey has a very uh, unique geostrategic location. No need to say that Turkey is a real bridge between the Asia uh, uh, and uh, uh, Europe. And uh, you know, uh, we are at the intersection of the you know uh, continents like Asia, Europe, and uh, Africa. And uh, th this is not only geo uh, geostrategic location. We believe that historically, culturally, religiously, tur economically, Turkey is playing a, a real uh, bridge role in the region. So, because of that reason more than uh, 1.3 billion population is accessible from Turkey. And thanks to the uh, connection provided by the infrastructure and superstructure uh, of the you know, infrastructure investments and the superstructure investments by the private sector and public sector plus private, uh, public-private partnerships, Turkey is uh, playing a very crucial role in the region. And this is not only for the investments, uh, this is not only for the trade, and this is also important for the energy security, food supply security, and etc. So, uh, lastly, I would like to uh, talk about the, the uh, last aspect is the environmental friendly investment uh, uh, climate in the country. Thanks to the uh, leadership uh, by the President Erdogan, since 2003, we have been having uh, reforms uh, in the economy. And uh, you can observe that those reforms are in line with the expectation of the private sector. First of all, in 2003, we started with the uh, amendment on the uh, law of foreign investment, uh, foreign direct investments. And just after that, Turkey uh, received 220 billion US dollars of FTI inflows to Turkey in the last uh, 18 years. So in my opinion, this is a very solid example of that. The reforms are not uh, for the sake of reforms. Reforms are result-oriented. Reforms are being monitored by the decision makers, and then uh, the continuous reform agenda is developed based on those inputs. So uh, again, uh, maybe another example of you know how successful uh, you know those reforms were. Uh, OECD has a, a index showing the liberty of uh, FDI inflows to a country. Turkey is one of the best-ranking uh, countries. Another example can be the World Bank's doing a business index. Uh, in 2006, Turkey was ranked as the 84th country in that global uh, do, uh, do ease of doing business index. And uh, just recently, Turkey ranked as the 33. So recently, in the last quarter of the 2020, President Erdogan announced a new reform drive. And last week, uh, we announced the uh, judiciary package uh, uh, of the, uh, you know, this uh, new uh, reform agenda. And uh, this week, hopefully, we are going to hear more on the economic reforms. And we believe that with the new uh, fresh reform agenda, 
uh, we are confident that Turkey will carry investments to the next level and reinforce its position as a safe haven in the region. So when we come to the today's agenda, as we all witnessing, you know, globally, there is a, a increasing trend among the investors, and it can be strategic investors or the financial investor profile. Everybody is caring more about the, the social dimensions, environmental di dimensions of, of their investment and businesses. So issues as, uh, such as um, uh, uh, women employment, green energy, greener uh, production methodologies, especially on the industries, uh, financial inclusion, elimination of the regional uh, development disparities, uh, and uh, th those uh, you know, uh, topics are at the uh, forefront than ever before. So uh, as we know that uh, as the investment office, we are much uh, more dealing with the equity perspective of this you know, SDG agenda, and we are closely following up the private equity funds raised only for uh, impact investment in line with the SDGs. Uh, and there are, we are aware that there are also debt instruments. Uh, maybe uh, my, my colleague uh, can mention more about that. And there are many other uh, financial instruments focusing on SDG agenda. We believe that there is a, a huge potential in Turkey, like in many other emerging markets. Uh, so we have been cooperating with UNDP Turkey office up until now. So thanks for their initiatives as well. So uh, we would, I, I would like to uh, extend my special gratitude, to especially the team based in Turkey. Uh, we, we, are, we have been uh, cooperating with them in, in the best way. Uh, so we focused on the SDG investor mapping. As you may remember, uh, in the last year's event, again, we announced uh, a, a, another important report together with the UNDP in this uh, Bosphorus summit. Again, it was on the impact investment ecosystem in Turkey. So this year we wanted to focus on this SDG investor mapping. The main reason, no need to again talk about many you know, other aspect was uh, to provide data for the decision makers. We are aware that there, are, you know, there is a huge uh, resource uh, on the global financial system to be allocated for the SDG investment and the impact uh, investments. But uh, the emerging markets are facing a a data uh, you know uh, challenge so there is a gap between the you know the uh, target and the, uh, the between the source so uh, our main priority is to eliminate this and uh, it, it has been already mentioned that uh, we have identified uh, eight uh, target sectors so uh, uh, we have identified uh, some very successful successful you know uh, examples of the SDG investments, and we ho have also identified solid uh, uh, examples of it. Maybe one of the most notable ones is uh, regarding the you know, environmental aspect. EVs, electric vehicles uh, are you know, rising phenomenon, and Turkey had an initiative to start a EV project, which is called as TOGG. So uh, th I think this was a, a response of the Turkey you know, uh, to the global uh, debate, to the global discussion, to initiate a, a, you know, a consortium uh, to invest more on the, uh, you know, uh, electrical vehicles. So uh, I would like to also uh, mention that uh, in Turkey's agenda, uh, EU's Green Deal has a huge room, especially in the last uh, two years, uh, the relevant government offices are, uh, you know, delicately working on, you know, how to uh, adopt EU Green Deal agenda. And in my opinion, this SDG investor mapping will also contribute to efforts of Turkey uh, in this regards as well. And lastly, I would like to talk about uh, on this public platform that we have been working on our national FDI strategy with the Minister of Industry uh, and uh, uh, SDG investments has a special place in our FDI strategy. We, you know, uh, underlined the importance. We have identified many verticals and SDG principles are touching to all uh, our uh, verticals. So hopefully uh, soon we are going to uh, publish the full uh, version of the, uh, our uh, FTI strategy. Uh, but I would like to also underline that the uh, SDG agenda was one of the key pillars of uh, our uh, new FTI strategy as well. So you now before uh, re uh, ending my remarks, I would like to highlight our key message that Turkey is a dynamic and growing G20 economy, uniquely linking East with the West. So we invest, we invite you to invest in Turkey. And I would like to thank you all for participating in the session and uh, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Burak Bey. You know, the symbol of our center is the Bosphorus Bridge and uh, it is really 
uh, Turkey is a good place as a, as a bridge to the world. We have here a delegation from Djibouti, uh, from the Ministry of Finance and others, who would like to replicate the same experience that we have seen in terms of the SDG impact back map. Yeah, uh, and uh, maybe you know, uh, we are here you know, uh, for the 11th Bosphorus Summit, and we, in the recent years we have witnessed that more than 80 countries participated in those events. Uh, and I think this is related to also connectivity of Turkey. Absolutely. As I mentioned to you earlier on, I usually when I'm in the plane, Turkish Airlines, I look at your wonderful brochure and I see all the wonderful business opportunity. I look forward to seeing some of these SDG enabled impact uh, opportunities also in that. Uh, definitely. Uh, actually, in the last one year, we have been publishing them online digitally. Uh, hard copies are not available due to the COVID measures, uh, but we have been uh, giving a special place, uh, you know, for the uh, impact investment and the SDG. I didn't want to go to details of the, you know, yes. the new agenda uh, of the NAB National Advisory Board for Impact Investment Shafak because Shafak Hanım, uh, Mr. Exactly. Shafak uh, Medariskil will you know, uh, underline the key messages. Uh, so I would like to stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now this segue nicely in Ms. Uh, Shafak Hanum's, uh, who is the chair of Etikiyab. Uh, from London speaking, please go ahead and uh, tell us what is Etikiyab's approach towards investing in the STG aligned business models? What opportunity do you see for the potential of impact investing in Turkey, particularly in terms of providing financing within the sectors prioritized in the STG investor maps? Thank you, Mr. Sopani. Um, my name is Shafak Müderiskil and I'm the chair of uh, the impact investing platform of Turkey called Etkia. And being the only woman uh, on this panel today, I'm very happy to address the audience uh, on this day of the International uh, Women's Day, as we will be speaking of uh, the Sustainable Development Goals and impact investing. Esteemed panelists, uh, distinguished guests, uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome you all at the Bosphorus Summit in Istanbul on this groundbreaking day that marks Turkey's readiness and motivation to facilitate a productive discussion and ongoing action among, among local and international capital holders regarding SDG financing and impact investing. In a world exposed to COVID-19 pandemic, in addition to the existing global challenges in achieving the sustainable development goals, collaboration and partnership is necessary more than ever. Bridging the $2.5 trillion annual funding gap requires collaboration in order to alleviate financing burden on governments, donor agencies, and development banks. Despite the difficulties, there is also a growing interest among investors to mobilize capital into activities that deliver strong financial returns while reducing poverty and inequality, advancing health and education, and protecting the environment. It's not tomorrow's challenge, it is the very moment that getting the private sector involved in order to be able to expand the SDG-related investment investments for achieving the sustainable development goals. Speaking of the SDG related investments, it's vital to inform the asset owners on how to create measurable and positive social and in environmental impact through their investments. A major challenge constraining SDG related investments is the difficulty of identifying bankable projects for investors. The SDG investor map is an evidence-based tool that provides impact intelligence by specifying national priorities and development needs, particularly figuring out subsectoral and sub-regional development needs while informing policymakers. I would like to take this opportunity to thank UNDP Turkey and UNDP Private Sector Center for initiating the SDG Investor Map of Turkey in collaboration with the Investment Office of the Presidency. This map has been developed as a guide that includes 27 investment opportunity areas identified across nine priority sectors and 14 subsectors. As of 2020, the assets under management for impact investing have reached $715 billion globally. However, there, is, there are still 
wide discrepancies, discrepancies in the geographical allocation of impact assets. In 2020, the Middle East and North Africa region and the Eastern Europe, Russia and Central Asia region accounted for only 2% and 6% respectively. Despite the low regional share, the Middle East and North Africa region experienced the highest growth in impact investments with a 43% compound annual growth rate over the last couple of years. Located in a strategic location bridging multiple continents, Turkey appeals to impact investors who are interested in both the Middle East and North Africa region and the Eastern Europe, Russia and Central Asia region markets. There is also great potential for Turkey in the social impact bonds and green bonds and the Islamic finance market. Green Sukuk is also an innovative financial instrument which has great potential in Turkey as it attracts all type investors, conventional, conventional investors, green investors and Islamic investors. While the country enjoys a relatively developed financial market, it still presents many opportunities to generate social and environmental impact to alleviate the development challenges observed in the region. Alongside a growing entrepreneurship ecosystem, Turkey also hosts an emerging social entrepreneurship network, which deserves closer examination to lay the baseline for incorporating financial profit with a positive development impact. The impact investing ecosystem study indicates five key areas where the highest impact may be generated in Turkey, which are refugee livelihoods, women's empowerment, renewable energy, health tech, and financial inclusion. Aligning these key areas with entrepreneurship activities in Turkey is critical to raising capital for businesses with and for impact and scale up models. When we look into the supply side of impact investing in Turkey, we observe that a strong supply of financial capital with a variety of players from development finance institutions to banks and private equity. There is significant access to major global funds such as the Clean Technology Fund, EU Instrument for Pre-Accession Assistance Funds, Global Environmental Facility Funds, and Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency Gender Funds. We can see that the Turkish banking sector displays a strong tendency to contribute to social and environmental sustainability. In 2019, six big Turkish banks became part of the 130 banks managing over $47 trillion assets that adopted the responsible banking principles backed by the United Nations Environment, Environment Program Finance Initiative. Turkey has a younger population compared to advanced economies and has potential to support a relatively young social entrepreneur network in the economy. Private equity and venture capital are in the rise as well as angel investments thanks to the recent tax reliefs product provided by the government. Investments in sectors with high impact potential, such as health and well-being, education, clean tech, agri-tech, energy and social good account for an increasing share in the number of investment deals per year. The public sector is the biggest source of early stage investments in which COSCEP, TÜBİTAK and the Ministry of Industry and Technology are key providers. A total of 5,636 foundations that operate in Turkey manage large sums of assets that can be channeled into impact investing, which greatly overlaps with the social welfare mandate of most foundations. On the demand side of impact investing, Turkey is positioned as the largest startup in Southeastern Europe. More than 550 startups as are established per year, Startup investment is projected to reach a high of $200 million per year. The entrepreneurship ecosystem is one of Turkey's strengths in variation of entrepreneurship indicators from the EU average in comparison to the EU. The Turkish impact creating enterprises focus particularly on 
good health and well-being, quality education, affordable and clean energy, and responsible consumption and production. Among social enterprises, 47% are young people, 55% are women, and 83% are highly educated. When it comes to enablers, there's a robust enabler environment that serves investment activities with and for impact. Incubators, accelerators, and technoparks for tech-based ventures are well positioned to be aligned with the impact investing mandate. There's a tendency in Turkish universities to promote impact investing activities. The Impact Investing Ecosystem Report defines Turkey as a country offering a promising context to initiate an impact investing ecosystem that will mobilize finances to alleviate serious development challenges in both the local and regional context. The Turkish market offers many first mover advantages for impact investing and being involved in building this ecosystem has a lot to offer for both the government and the private sector. In order to leverage the opportunities and manage transition to the impact economy in Turkey, establishing a national advisory board for impact investing was a crucial step. And I'm very happy to announce for the first time that the Turkish National Advisory Board uh, uh, for Impact Investing will be established by the end of March this year. Among the founders of the Turkish National Advisory Board are the Ad Development and Investment Bank of Turkey, Impact Investing Platform Etkia, the Investment Office of the Presidency, UNDP Private Sector Center, and UNDP Turkey. The Turkish National Advisory Board shall act as a platform and facilitate the development of impact investing in Turkey. The core aim is to create an enabling environment to facilitate the growth of impact investing and to establish a well-functioning ecosystem. The board uh, has a vision to make impact investing to be become a mainstream investing choice in Turkey. The Turkish National Advisory Board will be mobilizing government agencies and private sector stakeholders for developing a regulatory system to define and incentivize impact investing. Capacity building activities for government agencies, public sector capital and private sector capital will be at the core of activities as well as raising awareness and creating a common language for impact investing. Finally, developing a clear understanding of impact measurement and management among all sectors and establishing a national impact management framework is another priority. Let me also tell a little bit uh, of ETGAP's role uh, in the making of the National Advisory Board. ETGAP is the impact investing platform of Turkey established to advocate for impact investing and to create an ecosystem for impact investing in Turkey. ETGAP is chosen by the uh, members of the Impact Investing Task Force as the leading organization, organization to host the National Advisory Board uh, and the National Advisory Board uh, will hold its first meeting soon and announce uh, its incorporation at a separate event officially. Uh, so let me cut it here and pass the uh, floor back to you, Mr. Sobani. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Shafak Hanum. It's such an exciting news that the National Advisory Board is being established here in, in Turkey with all these uh, key players in the ecosystem. So now I turn over to Mr. Ibrahim Ostop, uh, the CEO of the Development and Investment Bank of Turkey. How does the Development and Investment Bank of Turkey contribute to the national progress towards the SDGs? And what is your current and future strategy for providing financing and investment into the sectors and areas identified in the map? Thank you very much. Uh, before I begin my speech, I would like to celebrate International Women's Day. Uh, it's my honor uh, for me to be with you at this SDG Investment Map launch meeting. Uh, as the Development and Investment Bank of Turkey, we consider uh, the contribution that we make to this effort to be of utmost importance. As all you know, uh, two, 
220 brought to an extraordinary year. This, the coronavirus pandemic became the number one item on the agenda across the world. And this period of history has once again showed us that how important sustainability is. Since its foundation in 1975, our bank has acted to finance sustainable development with the utmost sense of responsibility while also placing the preservation of the Turkey's sustainable approach and the most effective use of our national resources at the top of its priorities. We contribute to the sustainable progress of the companies through project finance, long-term and medium-term financing, investment banking services, and fund management via equity financing. We provide financial support in every field of the required by our country, from renewable energy to technology, manufacturing to education, with our dynamic, innovative, environmentally, and community-sensitive banking approach. And by spreading this awareness to all our stakeholders, we are determined to maintain our ceaseless efforts to add value to our country and the world. We settled our strategy, sustainable strategy, on two focal points. One is our role in supporting sustainable development, and the second one is the, our responsible banking approach. Demonstrating our respective attitudes towards the environment and society, as well as our effective and productive use of available sources, I can proudly say that we make direct and indirect contributions to 13 of 17 SDGs. 13 of 17 SDGs. It's very important for us. Also, we maintain our commitment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We are also working in line with our country's 20 to 33 uh, targets. Global Im impact investment market more than tripled in asset size in three years. Further growth is anticipated in the following years as the investors are no longer in interested only in pure financial returns, but also they want to do good with their investments. I believe Turkey can and must take a significant role share from this rapidly growing funds available from, for impact investment. We see the completion of the Sustainable Development Goals Investor Map as an important tool to attract more investors to our country, which offers great opportunities. I have no doubt that our country's sustainable development will gain great momentum with impact investment efforts planned across 27 investment areas under nine sectors. As a development and investment bank of Turkey, we have provided a great amount of funding to these priority sectors. Our bank is pr very proud to have played a key role in terms of promoting potential impact investments areas to all investors in Turkey and abroad. In the last three years, we have provided 5.6 billion Turkish lira in funds to renewable energy and 1.2 billion to the manufacturing sector. The total amount of funds that we have provided to the nine sectors that has emphasized in SDG investor map reached to 10.6 billion TL in the last three years. And the volume of the sectors identified in the map in our credit portfolio has increased 1.5 times and reached to 19 billion Turkish lira. Moreover, as a year ends, we finance around 500 renewable energy projects, totaling 12 billion Turkish lira. We financed, by the project we finance, we have to block around 3 million ton per year carbon dioxide emission that can be provided around 120 million trees effect. We procured one third of the total funding this, in these two years and with the scope of the COVID-19, we, we became the bank that contained high foreign funds from abroad worth to $550 million. By those funding, we would like to continue facilitate investment in priority sectors in the map and support enterprises which were economically affected by the COVID-19. We are also determined to support and improve investments in various sectors that are identified in the map through investment banking activities. We have currently, we have already uh, exclusive financial advisor for the school insurance and issues, and uh, we have already 
uh, acted as a financial advisor for the first, Turkey's first bond issue in the amount of transition to low carbon economy amount to 200 million dollars, 200 million Turkish lira. Our fund management business is also aiming for the SDGs investor map. We are also proud to be playing an important role in the establishment of the National Advisory Board. We believe that National Advisory Board's active engagements will make it possible for our country to manage its impact investment strategy more effectively and to become a key regional player in the field of impact investments. At this time in history, impact investment is playing a beer, a, even more important in economic developments. As a member of the Global Impact Investment Network, we have been playing, we are planning to raise funds for the impact investment in Turkey. Before I will leave the stage, I would like to mention again five areas that has been already mentioned in the, uh, in the map, in the uh, summary exec executive summary. And from that map, we have already tapped four of them. The one of them is the regarding with the refugees. We are currently extending loans by, with the World Bank to the refugees affected regions. And we are planning to give grants for the refugees as well. And the second one for the women emp empowerment in all our financings, we are uh, somehow the, uh, allocating some portion of the fund to these uh, area. Renewable energy and energy efficiency is another area that we have already tapped. Financial inclusion, we are currently acting as an uh, apex bank for the leasing companies, for factoring companies, and for the banks in order to give that kind of funding to the SMEs. Thank you very much for your uh, patience. Thank you very much, Ibrahim Bey. So I'll, I'll do another round of questions here. Uh, Mr. Burak Bey, of the investment opportunity and the business models that you've seen in the maps, you know, from uh, smart cities to re uh, electric vehicles, which are the ones that uh, are mo most exciting sitting from where you are? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, uh, from the investment office perspective, you know, in all uh, those identified sectors, uh, there is a high FDI potential. And when we look at the, our previous project portfolio, I mean, the successful project cases, we have many, you know, projects in uh, those uh, various sectors, and uh, in many of them, uh, we had the uh, SDG aspect. But uh, you, you would like to uh, underline at least one uh, or two of them. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this is education and healthcare. Uh, because, you know, uh, first of all, education. Uh, I already mentioned that you know the uh, young uh, population of Turkey, you know, is you know the largest in the region. And we are adding a more than one million population to our you know, existing population every year. And you know, uh, if you would like to make a difference in the long run, you know, uh, it is the education. I mean, we have to you know uh, enable a, a platform that you know or, or a system that uh, all the individuals, all the citizens can access to you know. Uh, education system in the uh, most efficient way. So all the investments in the education related areas, I mean, education technologies uh, and democratization of the education and etc. Uh, this is crucial in my opinion. Secondly, the healthcare aspect, uh, first of all, again, the same reason. I mean, uh, we, we are having 83 million uh, population. And when we look at, the, you know, the before 2003 period, access to healthcare services was limited, but thanks to the, you know, the, uh, the uh, prioritization of healthcare as a, you know, a target sector uh, by the uh, President Ardon and his team, uh, we, have, uh, we have had many uh, success uh, cases. And for the next, uh, you know, level of the healthcare investment, uh, all life sciences related investments are crucial. And you know, when we look at the digitalization of healthcare, healthcare services, Turkey offers a huge uh, data you know, uh, set. Uh, we, we have a, a deputy minister in the Ministry of Health uh, responsible for all digitalization of those services and you know, uh, providing data for uh, artificial intelligence related platforms and etc. And I believe that Turkey make a huge difference, a big impact uh, in that uh, specific uh, two sectors. Those are very great sector. We actually have an SDG AI lab at the Istanbul Center when we look forward to a collaboration on that front. And, uh, you know, here where you have a HES code, everything is digital. So it, it's very cutting edge. Um, I, I turn now to Ms. Shafak Hanum. In terms of your National Advisory Board, what are the types of stakeholders you envision to engage in this platform in, from the investor uh, uh, side and how? I mean, family, you know, different family offices, you know, pension fund. 
uh, it would be good to, to get a sense of what is a stakeholder uh, strategy. Well, as, as we have not yet uh, established the National Advisory Board, uh, I, I, I cannot go into detail here, but I can, I can tell that we will, be, uh, we will be including all stakeholders and particularly private sector uh, players, asset managers, and uh, public companies, private sector companies, uh, enablers, universities, and uh, other NGOs uh, in, in, in this uh, advisory board that we are going to establish in the uh, coming uh, weeks uh, legally. Uh, and uh, we will be mobilizing private uh, private sector capital. Uh, we will be we will be focused on private sector sector uh, capital uh, largely. That's Great. what I can tell you. Thank you very much, and I think we all look forward to this working today together in this strategy, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Bey. Um, as you think from a not develop, you talked about these loans, all these various programs you have. How do we ensure that the SME sector benefits from these impact-oriented uh, SDG sort of opportunities? How do you think about the SME sector in Turkey and getting them in these around these opportunities? <coughs> Sorry. Actually, we are planning to, uh, to somehow to touch with the SME via the other financial uh, players, such as since we have an, as a development bank, we are currently financing ourselves from the DFIs currently. So when we are getting this kind of funds, we are planning to use leasing companies or other retail banks, other commercial banks who have a branch of uh, large blend branches because we have been already the only one headquarter in Istanbul. Uh, so for that reason, we are planning to uh, somehow uh, finance these SMEs via these banks rather than it means that we are somehow including all the other financial players in the in this in this in this in this game actually uh, otherwise we are unable to tap the to these all uh, SMEs for that reason we are asking especially these financial intermediaries to be in line with our ECG principles I mean that's why we will somehow uh, these DFIs especially World Bank the uh, Asia in Infrastructure Investment Bank or European Investment Bank, these KFW, that kind of DFIs, they have somehow put some uh, guidelines for us. And we will put that guidelines to the other intermediaries in order to uh, be aligned with the, with the, with the source and the, especially with the uh, beneficiaries. The, by means of beneficiaries, the SMEs somehow comply with these kind of, let's say, uh, sustainable and, and respectful to the society and the environmental as well. That's what we are planning to do. Great, thank you. And my final question is for Mr. Claudio Tomasi. Uh, your team has deep experience around thematics on uh, green envi on environment. Uh, you set up recently SME model factories in Turkey, fourth industrial revolution, sort of expertise. Um, how do you envision um, leveraging your team um, and, and your efforts in terms of making these specific investment opportunities happen in Turkey? Thank you. Thank you very much, Saba, for, for, the, for the question. And this is already happening as, a, as we speak. Um, we're having a, a very strong cooperation with the private sector. A couple of years ago, we have come up uh, with this uh, uh, platform, the Business for Goals platform, that uh, gathers basically several uh, private sector actors. And this is a very good space in order to discuss, in order to prioritize, in order to find the solution and to amplify basically uh, what this mapping has uh, uh, is showing us. Uh, and that's why in my introductory remark, I was mentioning uh, another initiative that um, has been spearheaded under that, uh, that platform. But of course, this uh, can become a truly sustainable and truly impactful as long as uh, with the private sector, we foster a cooperation and a dialogue with the public sector and with the banking system. Again, something that we have been working very hard uh, uh, on. And so basically in a nutshell, my answer is that we will keep 
doing that uh, with the full commitment uh, and we will see how this uh, pans out into the future, how further develops because the gap, the financing gap uh, at the global scale and in Turkey is still huge. And so we want really to see how we can support and help uh, the right investment to land into the right business models which are inclusive and sustainable. And so this is a win-win situation from a profitable point of view, but also from a sustainability point of view. Over to you. Thank you very much. Um, we're coming to a close for this event. I would like to thank the amazing team that has worked hard on this pioneering um, investment map, the deputy director of the Istanbul Center, Gulchin Khanum Salingan, who's not, who uh, has very much been leading this effort with Seher Ala Chache, who's from the UNDP uh, ARR of the UNDP Turkey, Funda Suzer, uh, who has been the SCG Impact Lead, Melis Aslan, and also Piril. So you see it was actually all women's team launching this today. So congrats to them all uh, for this fantastic work. Uh, we are ready as a center to support other countries to go through the same um, sort of exercise. We are working with Djibouti, who's here. We have a delegation with Djibouti and we'll be working with other countries. Um, as we know, we had had today the opportunity to discuss how the finance industry is becoming more inclined to channel capital towards project for social uh, development impact. I think uh, we will continue to showcase the great potential of SDG anchor investment and impact investing. And what the plan is in two months, there'll be a global UN sanctioned sort of database where these opportunities will be highlighted. And we look forward to uh, your collaboration, not only in Turkey, but also in advising other countries in terms of how to go through the process. Thank you again and have a great day. And congratulations to all involved in the effort.